Okay, so good morning. So I'll be uh, discussing yung first uh, handout natin, which is geotechnical engineering. So your soil mechanics part, uh, you can actually study it alone. Pero to geotechnical na part, medyo mag-focus tayo dito. Okay. Although mag-focus tayo dito sa geotechnical part, kailangan pa rin nating mag-aral ng sa soil mechanics dahil kasama pa rin siya sa quiz. Okay. So, um, ano natin? So, refer to your handouts. Ang um, first situation natin is meron tayong 2.5 by 2.5 meters na square footing na kailangan nating i-assess. So, yung assessment natin for that is kailangan nating kuhanin muna yung angle of internal friction which is stated sa problem 1. Next is yung cohesion ng soil. So, itong dalawang to, sa situation natin, ang kailangan natin ay drained condition. Since ang tinatanong is, what is the effective angle of internal friction? So, in this situation, ang kailangan natin ay drained. So, following, after natin makuha yung dalawang factors, kailangan natin kunin ngayon yung ultimate bearing capacity ng 2.5 by 2.5 meters sa square footing natin using standard equation and uh, standard equation for square footings and yung general equation natin for ultimate bearing capacity of footings. So, paano natin sa start to? Okay. Given na meron tayong cell confining pressure, given na meron tayong deviator stress, and given na meron tayong poor water pressure, pwede natin ngayon kuhanin yung Ano? So, meron tayong dalawang tests na kinandakt. And at the same time, meron tayong cell pressure and pore water pressure for both. So, ibig sabihin, kung meron tayong test na kinakonsider, so this is test 1 uh, and 2, since ang hinahanap natin is drain condition, Ano ba yung alam natin sa neutral stress and total stress? So, kung drain condition yan, ibig sabihin yung total stress natin, which is yung cell confining pressure, kailangan natin ibawas ngayon yung effect ng water para makuha natin yung effective stress. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong 200 and 400 kilopascals na total stress and meron tayong neutral stress na 142.5 saka 275.5. So, syempre, as we acquire yung difference, pwede natin ngayon consider na meron tayong... Okay, so, that's 200 minus 142.5. Meron tayong 57.5. Ngayon, napanibagong effective stress. Same time, meron tayong 400 minus 175.5 Meron tayong 124 Meron tayong 124.5 na Effective stress So, effective stress natin na yan Yun ngayon yung ano natin? Yung um, tawag natin doon? Yun ngayon yung bagong effective stress or yung bagong minor principal stress na dapat natin gamitin para doon sa more circle natin. So, uh, isang possible way lang na makuha natin yung effective angle of internal friction ay sa paggamit ng more circle. So, paano natin gagamitin ngayon yung more circle? given na meron tayong minor principal stress and meron tayong deviator stress. Okay. So, para malaman natin is, paano ba natin pinaplot yung more circle ngayon? So, pinaplot natin yung more circle. Karaniwan ng plotting natin since naghahanap tayo ng angle of internal friction. Kadalasan, since meron tayong dalawang tests na kinakondak, i-plot muna natin lahat ng mga values. So, instead na yung 
total stress ang i-consider natin yung effective stress na dapat. So, that is 57.5. So, yan yung minor principal stress. Paano natin ngayon makukuha yung major principal stress? Makukuha natin yung major principal stress by just adding yung deviator stress. Sabig sabihin, ito ngayon, pwede natin sabihin na yung sigma prime 1 is just equal to sigma prime 3 plus deviator stress natin at failure. Okay? So, big sabihin, yung sigma 1 para sa test 1 ay equal to 57.5 plus yung deviator stress natin which is equal to 119. Then, yung, yung sigma 1 doon sa test 2 natin is meron tayong 124.5 plus deviator stress to 143. Meron tayong 57.5 plus 119. Meron tayong 176.5. And yung major principal stress doon sa pangalawang test natin, meron tayong 124.5 plus 143. Meron tayong 267.5. Okay. So, sa pagpa-plot niyan, meron tayong 176.5. And, yung next natin. So, 124.5. Gagawa tayo ngayon na mas malaking more circle for that. So, meron tayong 124.5. And, 267. Ano ngayon yung magiging impact niya? Since yung soil natin ay hindi naman sand, kapag sand, alam natin na cohesionless yung sand. Therefore, kung gagawin natin, yung more circle natin, hindi pa tayo tapos dito. Ala pa tayo nung y-axis. So, yung y-axis natin, pwede natin ilagay dito hindi natin ilalagay doon sa vertex ng angle because meron tayong present na y-intercept. Ito y-intercept na to, yan ngayon yung kinakonsider natin as the value of cohesion. Now, importante sa more circle na kailangan din natin malaman yung plotting ng center. Kasi sa pag-plot ng center, alam natin na yung tangent is perpendicular doon sa failure envelope natin. At the same time, syempre, meron tayong corresponding radius para doon sa figures natin. Same time, yung angle na nakaform between the x-axis and the failure envelope is considered as the value of the angle of internal friction. Okay. Ngayon, Paano ba natin makukuha yung angle of internal friction in this perspective? Okay. Kung mapapansin nyo, dito sa pagbuo ng more circle natin, meron tayong mapaform na dalawang triangles. So, sa pagform ng dalawang triangles, mapapansin nyo, meron tayong dalawang right triangles dyan. Composing of R1 and R2. Tapos, meron tayong 267.5. Sorry, hindi pala. Hindi 267.5 yan. Paano natin kukuhanin yung center? C2 and C1. Paano natin makukuha ngayon yung center? To get the center, ano lang yung gagawin natin? Kailangan muna natin kuhanin yung radius. So, to get the radius, ano yung dapat natin divide? Yung radius, pwede natin gawin na yung radius R is just equal to the deviator stress divided by 2. Pwede natin sabihin na yung R1 natin and R2 natin ay magkaiba. So, in deviator stress, R1 is equal to 119 over 2 and R2 is equal to 143 over 2. 
1.19 divided by 2 ay 59.5 R2 so 143 divided by 2 is 71.5 So, ibig sabihin, yung center 1 and center 2 natin ay equal to ano? Yung center 1 and center 2, we can add actually yung effective stress or yung minor principal stress. So, 57.5 and then meron tayong 124.5 plus 59.5 and 71.5. So, 57 plus 59.5. Meron tayo 117. Second center natin. So, 124.5 plus 71.5 is equal to 196. Okay. So, C1 and C2. Meron na tayong values for that. Ibig sabihin, yung sa mga center natin, meron tayong 117 and 196. Okay. So, meron tayong value ng cohesion. Pero hindi pa natin alam. Problema natin is, meron tayong vertex and same time, yung angle of internal friction nandyan. Pero, ano tong distance na x? Hindi natin alam yan. Pero, kung titingnan natin, paano ba natin kukuhanin yung angle of internal friction mula dito sa figure na to? Yung R1, pwede natin sabihin na this is equal to 59.5. Yung R2, pwede rin natin sabihin na this is equal to 71.5. Ngayon, kung meron tayong ganitong values, we can actually use sign, sign law. Yung sign law, pwede natin sabihin na sign phi prime is equal to ano, yung opposite over yung hypotenuse. Kung mapapansin natin, perpendicular doon sa angle of internal, ay sa failure envelope yung radius natin so therefore, yung hypotenuse natin is itong longer side na nandito sa ibaba ngayon yung 117 and 196 pwede natin yung R1 and R2 yan ngayon yung opposite side to sa angle, ibig sabihin this is equal to 71.5 minus 59.5 5. Ngayon, paano mangyayari dito sa value ng x? Since hindi pa natin alam, we can actually try na yung hypotenuse is 196 plus x minus the quantity of 117 plus x din. Ano ngayon yung posible mangyayari dun sa x? Yung x natin ngayon dito, makakancel siya since negative sign yan. So, ibig sabihin, yung sign phi prime natin is just simply equal to R2 minus R1 all over center 2 minus center 1. So, pwede natin makuha, meron tayong... 71.5 minus 59.5 all over 196 minus 170. So, phi prime is simply yung inverse sign ng nakuha natin value from here. So, pwede natin sabihin na this is inverse sign ng 71.5 minus 59.5 all over 196 minus 117. So, angle of internal friction now is equal to 8.737 degrees. And ngayon, yung answer for number 1. Okay. 
So, paano naman natin kukuhanin yung cohesion sa number 2? Okay. Sa second situation, yung number 2 natin, yung cohesion natin ay makukuha natin from you know, from this figure. So, kung itatry din natin na i-reduce pa sa isang figure lang, kahit anong trial yan, kahit trial 1 or trial 2 gamitin natin, parehas lang na magiging value ng cohesion. So, since nasa medyo malapit tayo, try natin yung figure 1. Okay. So, meron tayong 117. Same time, hindi pa natin alam yung value ng cohesion. We can actually divide yung figure na to into one single trapezoid. So, yung trapezoid na to, ito lang yung gagawin natin yung reference para doon sa Mars circle. Tapos na tayo sa particular topic na to. Yan. So, meron tayong figures 1, 2, and 3. Ngayon, kung paghahatiin natin itong tatlong figures na to, we can actually uh, gather information kung ano ba yung makukuha natin values. So, yung radius natin, meron tayong 59.5. Meron tayong side na to na 117. Hanggang dito sa point na to. This is 0. Ngayon, ano itong point na to? Ano rin itong point na to? So, alam natin na itong point na to is yung coordinates ng normal stress saka yung shear stress at failure. So, at this side, itong point na to, ito yung normal stress. Or let's say effective stress kasi nasa drain condition tayo. Okay. Ngayon, paano natin siya makukuha? Kanina, nakakuha tayo ng angle of internal friction. At the same time, since meron tayong triangle na mare-reflect dito, pwede rin natin sabihin na this is the angle of internal friction. Kung titignan natin itong triangle na to, we can also say that this is the angle of internal friction. So ngayon, may information tayo dito. Pwede natin makuha agad yung normal stress. Paano natin makukuha yung normal stress? So, ang goal natin is makuha natin yung cohesion. Pero kailangan natin kuhanin itong dalawang to para makuha yung cohesion. Bakit? Yung shear stress at failure, yun ngayon yung height natin. So, kung yan ngayon yung height, tapos yung normal stress yung length, madali na lang natin makukuha yung shear stress at failure. Wherein, yung shear stress at failure can be equal to yung may triangle tayo na 59.5 ang hypotenuse. Para makuha natin yung shear stress at failure, we should use, ano? Cosine. So, meron tayong R cosine V prime. So, yung R cosine V prime, pwede natin ngayon makuha. So, meron tayong 59.5 cosine 8.737 degrees. Shear stress at failure is equal to 15.5 So, meron tayo 58.809 kilopascal. Ngayon, yung shear stress at failure na yan, isang important factor yan para makuha natin yung cohesion. Pero, later pa natin makukuha yan since kailangan pa natin yung normal stress. Yung normal stress naman natin ngayon, paano natin makukuha based on this analysis? Uh, malalaman natin itong side na to by using sine para dito sa triangle na to. At the same time, kung makukuha natin yung sign niyan, 
makukuha agad natin yung normal stress, therefore, mabubuo natin yung second figure. So, meron tayong uh, sorry, this is supposedly center 1 minus R sin phi prime. So, yung center natin, which is 117 minus 59.5 sin 8.737 degrees normal stress is equal to so 117 minus 59.5 sin 8.737 meron tayo 107.962 kilopascal ngayon Base dito sa magiging figure natin sa figures 1 and 2, pwede natin makuha ngayon yung cohesion. Paano natin makukuha yung cohesion? Kung mapapansin natin, yung shear stress at failure, meron siyang dalawang components ulit. Yung cohesion, saka yung value ng y na yan. Ngayon, pagkuha natin nitong dalawang values na to, pwede natin sabihin na yung shear stress at failure is equal to the cohesion plus yung value ng y na yan. Or, pwede natin sabihin na this is C prime plus ano yung value ng y. Meron tayo nakuhang normal stress na value. Same time, itong triangle na to, i-assess natin. Since, yung normal stress natin, yung adjacent side, and yung y natin is yung opposite side, Therefore, we can use tangent para makuha ngayon yung value ng y. So, this is plus the normal stress times tangent phi prime. So, kung check natin, kung i-assess natin yan, pwede nating sabihin na... 58.809 is equal to the cohesion plus 107.962 tangent 8.737 degrees. Or, okay, alisin na natin yung isang papel. Pwede natin sabihin na yung cohesion is just equal to Ano na yun? So, this is equal to the shear stress minus yung normal stress tangent V prime. So, pwede natin sabihin na this is equal to 58.809 minus 107.962 tangent 8.737 degrees. Cohesion is now equal to that. Meron tayong 58.809 minus 107.962 tangent 8.737. Cohesion natin is equal to 42.217 kilo pascal. Yan ngayon yung cohesion natin or yung answer natin for question number 2. Okay. Nakukuha so far. Ngayon. After natin yan, yung questions 3 and 4 na. Yung questions 3 and 4, ang gagawin natin ngayon dyan is meron tayong general equation and standard In standard equation for square footings para makuha natin yan. Ngayon, paano ba yung Terzaghi's bearing capacity equation? Yung Terzaghi's bearing capacity equation ang general equation natin dyan is ultimate bearing capacity is equal to C prime and C plus Q and Q plus 
0.5 B gamma N gamma. Yung NC, NQ, and N gamma, makukuha natin siya by using yung mga coefficients na nakabigay sa table or kung board exam situation yan, given na sa problem. Ngayon, for square footing, ang uh, ultimate bearing capacity is 1.3 C prime NC plus Q and Q plus 0.4 B gamma N gamma. Kapag naman circular footing, ang equation natin is QU is equal to 1.3 C prime NC plus Q and Q plus 0.3 B gamma N gamma. So, for the two problems, ang gagamitin natin ay yung square equation saka yung general equation. Okay. Given na uh, yung NC, so, given tayo ng NC, NQ, saka N gamma. Na base doon sa problem natin. So, base sa problem natin, ang given ay ang NC is equal to 9.09 ang NQ is equal to 2.44 N gamma is 0.44 So, gagamitin natin sila isa-isa. Ngayon, meron tayong nakuhang cohesion since ang soil natin ay hindi natin alam. So, not unless sand yung soil natin, wala tayong cohesion na kukunin kapag sand. Pero any other soil type, kailangan ng cohesion. So, therefore, pwede natin gamitin. So, from, for problem 3, ang kailangan natin is yung square equation para sa footing. Big sabihin, ang ultimate bearing capacity natin is 1.3 C prime N C plus Q N Q plus 0.4 B gamma N gamma. Ano-ano muna ba yung mga kulang natin? So, kompleto, meron tayong cohesion, meron tayong NC, may NQ tayo, may N gamma tayo, may base tayo. Yung unit weight, may unit weight tayo na given, wala. Yung unit weight natin ay nakadepende sa specific gravity saka sa porosity since given yon If the specific gravity is equal to 2.62 and porosity natin is 0 0.38 ano yung po pwede natin equation? Alam natin na uh, para makuha yung, poro, yung void ratio this is n over 1 minus n so pwede natin gawin 0 0.38 1 over 1 minus 0 0.38 to get the void ratio where in E is equal to 0.38 over 1 minus 0.38 meron tayong 0 0.612 na void ratio now, kung meron tayong void ratio na ganyan paano natin makukuha yung unit weight so, sa unit weight natin, hindi ko pala, may hindi pala ako na ibigay dito sa example na to. Since hindi siya sand, let's say meron tayong moisture content na around 50%. Okay. So, kung may moisture content tayo na 50%, pwede natin makuha yung unit weight na moist na equal to 0.5 moisture content the degree of saturation sorry degree of saturation gs plus se multiplied by unit weight of water all over 1 plus e so meron tayong 2.62 plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.612 
multiplied by the unit weight na water na 9.81 all over 1 plus 0 0.612. So, my unit weight is equal to 2.62 plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.612 times 9.81 divided by 1.612. So, my unit weight natin is 17.806 kilonewton per cubic meter. So, meron na tayong unit weight. Next naman natin is yung natitira natin which is Q. Ano nga ba yung Q? Yung value ng Q would depend on the depth of the footing. Since yung value ng Q can be denoted as the nominal bearing capacity of the soil in terms of the depth of the footing. So, meron tayong 2 meters na footing. Tapos, referring to this point, let's say point A, doon natin makukuha yung Q. Wherein, Q is equal to gamma M multiplied by the depth of footing. Meron tayong 17.806 times so, 17.806 times 2 ay meron tayong 35.612 kilo pascal. Ngayon, so lahat ng components na yan, kompleto na tayo. Ibig sabihin, pwede na natin makuha yung ultimate bearing capacity. Where in QU is equal to 1.3 times cohesion na 42.217 times the coefficient na 9.09 .09 plus Q which is 35.612 multiplied by NQ na 2.44 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by the base na 2.5 so kapag square footing definitely yung base na gagamitin natin ay kahit ano sa kanila Pero pagdating natin sa rectangular footing, ang kailangan natin gamitin is yung shorter side instead na yung longer side because kung ano man yung kaya ng, ng shorter side, mas kaya ng longer side. Pero kung yung longer side ang i-consider natin, baka hindi na kaya ni ng shorter side. So, dun tayo lagi sa shorter side mag-consider. Okay, so balik tayo. After ng base natin, meron tayong unit weight na 17.806 so this is B gamma yung N gamma na lang natin nakulang na 0 0.44 ultimate bearing capacity is equal to ito na yung medyo anong part kasi ang dami mong pipindutin so 1.3 times 42.217 times 9.09 .09 plus 35.612 times 2.44 plus 0 0.4 times 2.5 times 17.806 times 0 0.44 So, ultimate bearing capacity is equal to 593.606 kilo pascal. Yan ngayon yung ultimate bearing capacity for number 3. So, yung number 4 natin, ang gagamitin natin ay itong general equation natin. So, pwede natin makita yung difference. So, QU is equal to C prime NC plus QNQ plus 0 0.5 B gamma N gamma. So, cohesion, meron tayong 42.217. Multiplied by 9.09 .09 plus 35.612 times 2.44 plus 0 0.4, 0 0.5 rather times 2.5 17.806 
and 0 0.40 font. Meron tayo, 42.217. Meron tayong ultimate bearing capacity na 480.439 kilo pascal. Yan ngayon yung final answer for question number 4. So, natapos natin so far ay yung problem number 1 pa lang. Okay? So, next part natin is yung problem number 2. So, sa problem number 2, Tingnan natin yung downward C page. Pero sa next part na ng video to.